Hello and welcome back to another Future Doc House production. I decided to write my own clinical microbiology review book. It's called Medicine, the Ultimate Guide, um, Clinical Microbiology, a Quick Review by yours truly, Future Doc House. If you would like, uh, this is only the first chapter. If you'd like the first chapter emailed to you, please find me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever social me media platform you are currently using. Uh, Google or uh, search for Future Doc, D-O-C, House. And uh, I will uh, leave me your email address and I will send you a copy of uh, what, I've, uh, what I've written. All right. Uh, this, uh, this, these lectures are free and uh, this material that I email to you is, is free. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy it. It's for educational purposes. And uh, let's start. Let's talk about uh, chapter one. All right, chapter one. Bacteria introduction. Let's talk about the introduction of uh, bacteriology. And if we're going to talk about microbiology, we need to talk about Robert Herman Koch. Robert Herman Koch. Uh, he's a very famous person. You will see many things named after him. So be aware of this name. In 19, sorry, in 1890, uh, he made four postulates. He published four postulates to prove a causative relationship between microorganism and disease. Now, in order to prove that there is a causative relationship between a microbe and a disease, you need to prove these things. One, the microbe must be found in abundance in the diseased organism and not found in the healthy organism. Two, the microbe should be isolated and cultured. Three, the cultured microbe should be inoculated into a healthy organism and cause that healthy organism to uh, get diseased, become diseased. Four, the microbe should be re-isolated from the inoculated organism that's been, you know, and, uh, and cultured. So once these things are proven, these postures are proven, then you can uh, establish that this microbe, this microorganism is in fact the cause of the disease. All right, the fun stuff. Gram stain techniques, fixation, when you, when you do a swab, let's say you swab a throat, okay? You put that swab uh, sample onto a slide and you fix it onto the slide, usually through a Bunsen burner by burning it onto the slide. Two, crystal violet. Crystal violet is a bluish stain and you would do 55 to 60 seconds. Uh, and uh, this is how you would um, uh, give it enough time for the dye to soak into the uh, cell wall or cell membrane. Uh, of the uh, bacteria of say if you swap it through and you're looking for streptococcus okay uh, two three rinse with deionized water four add iodine five rinse with deionized water six add alcohol or acetone now why do we add alcohol or acetone alcohol or acetone basically decolorizes it okay decolorizes the stain removes the, the stain removes the crystal violet okay and this helps us separate uh, which uh, bacteria is gram positive, which bacteria is gram negative. And then you counter stain it. Now you add a different color stain, which is saffronin, which is a red color stain. That's why, hence it's in red. Rinse with deionized water again, and you look under the uh, microscope. You look, you put it on the microscope uh, table, look through the microscope, see what color it is, see what types, shapes, sizes the uh, microorganism is. Most likely it's a bacteria when we're doing gram staining. And if the uh, bacteria shows up as blue or purple color, then the bacteria is a gram-positive bacteria. If the, if the bacteria shows up as a reddish color, pinkish color, it's a gram-negative bacteria. Now, why do we know the difference that there's diff two different types of bacteria um, based off of gram staining? Well, gram-positive bacteria has a thick cell wall, so with a lot of extensive cross linkings of the amino acids. Now the extensive cross linking of the amino acids and this, this thick cell wall absorbs the crystal violet and all the processes afterwards, the, especially the decolorization, the alcohol and acetone, does not remove the color. And if it does not remove the crystal violet color from the bacteria, um, it's, it shows up as blue and purple, okay? Um, but if it is a gram-negative bacteria, the thin cell walls, the cell walls is much thinner 
and it has a simple lighting pattern, so linear pattern between the amino acids. Now the stain, now the stain, the crystal bile stain that, that is staining the cell membrane can be easily washed off by the alcohol and acetone because there's no cross-linking, it's just a linear pattern and it can be washed off and restained with saffroning, okay, and that's why it shows up red. Now, be careful. Gram staining can give you gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria, but there's also a family of bacteria that don't stain or very poorly stains a gram color, a gram positive or gram negative color, a blue, a blue color or a red color. And we'll talk about that in our next video. So if you like this video and you want more of these videos, please click subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day. Congratulations, you are a medical student. One day, you will be a qualified doctor and your home will be a hospital or a clinic. But for now, your journey begins in the lecture hall. You will listen to countless hours of lectures and spend evening after evening in the library reading page after page of medical theory. And guess what? This is the easy part. The hardest part is retaining your medical knowledge so it's there when you need it. For example, examinations. But don't worry, we are here to help. Meet Jeff. Jeff is a good student. He goes to all his lectures. He says no to parties so he can stay late in the library. But when it's time to take the exams, Jeff freezes. The knowledge that he spent so long learning just isn't there anymore. Now meet Jennifer. Like Jeff, she is a good student. But instead of just reading textbooks late into the night, Jennifer uses technology to help her study. She also watches lectures on YouTube and practices her knowledge with QP, a medical quiz app and online platform. Jennifer likes QP because it has 10,000 practice questions covering her entire medical course. This means she can practice her medical knowledge from anywhere and in a way that actually prepares her for the exams. Because she is practicing with exam-style questions, when she takes real exams, she'll be ready. Don't be a Jeff. Begin your 7-day free trial with QP today.